I have a secret to tell you. You can make a lot more money as a freelancer than you can in a nine to five and work a lot less, like a lot less. Like we're talking full-time salary, working eight hours a week. This stuff right here is the reason why I do this. In my last nine to five job, I made $58,000 a year. I worked over 40 hours a week and I had to drive 50 minutes each way to get to work. In my first full year of freelancing, I made the same amount of money. I worked half as much. I had zero commute and I got to travel around Europe while I was working. I really think that we are all done a great disservice because there's no educational institution that's really teaching people how to freelance, right? And most people don't even know that this is possible and that you can make a lot more money doing this. You can work less hours and have a better work-life balance. I also realize that I am incredibly privileged that this has worked out so well for me, but I don't think it's just luck. There is some luck involved, of course, but I think I have a good system for how to do this. I know a lot about it. There's been a lot of trial and error. I've read, read a lot of books, listened to a lot of podcasts. So today I want to share with you how much I made every year of my freelancing journey from 2017 to 2020. Why not 2021 and 2022? I'll explain. But I want this video to serve as an inspiration for you to know what is possible. And please trust that I am not the only person who makes this much money and does this, a lot of people do. They just don't have YouTube channels to tell you about it, but they exist, they're out there. And I should know because it was talking to people who were this successful as freelancers that let me know what was possible. Once I knew what was possible, I really started aiming a lot higher. So I hope by watching this video, you'll get some ideas for your own freelancing business and also start to expand your threshold for how much you think you can make in this field of work because you could probably make a lot more than you think. So if you wanna see how much money I made as a freelance writer and how much I worked, keep watching because I'm gonna break down all the numbers in this video. Okay, bye! I mean, not bye, because I'm gonna keep going, so don't leave. Okay, here we go! Also, I just wanna say all the numbers in this video are just from freelance writing. They're not from coaching, courses, social media sponsorships, or anything like that. This is pure writing numbers. We'll also be giving you these numbers in revenue. So this is how much I earned from my clients. There's no expenses taken out. As a freelance writer, if you're not outsourcing stuff, you're expenses are kind of like negligible. They're not that much, right? You pay for like a website domain and like maybe a couple other things. This is also pre-tax. I'm just not gonna get into taxes right now. So just deal with it. If you watched last week's video, you'll know that my, I, my tripod broke and I just didn't get another one. So we'll just film like this today. Cool, very cool. First of all, I just wanna say that we're talking about my third attempt at freelancing. I did fail on my first two attempts at freelancing. If you wanna hear my full freelancing journey story, then please watch this video. I go into a lot greater detail about it, but on my third attempt at freelancing, the one that really took, I began in July 2017. So that was five years ago. In 2017, as a freelancer, I made $7,939.12 between July and December. So that comes out to about $1,323 per month. I worked a total of 499 hours between July and December, which is about 19 hours per week, which that might sound low, but the way that I calculate my work hours, which this is not how you have to do it, but the way that I do it is I only turn on my timer when I am actually sitting down and working. I don't just turn it on during my work hours, if that makes sense. So when you go to an office, they say you're there 40 hours per week, right? But how much time are you spending like actually working on stuff versus goofing off with your coworkers and like crying in the bathroom and stuff. So even though it says 19 hours per week, I was working like 10 10 to seven every day with breaks and like time for lunch and stuff. Anyways, that boils down to $22.24 per hour. I was charging between $35 and $45 per hour. And the gap in there is the hours that I was spending doing non-billable work. So things I wasn't getting paid for, like cold pitching, working on my social media, admin tasks, like answering emails or bookkeeping. During 
This time in 2017, I was focused on a few things. One was cold pitching. I spent a lot of time cold pitching. And if you wanna know what cold pitching is and why it's important to your business, you should watch this video. So I was basically just emailing businesses in my niche to pitch my services to them and try to get them to hire me as their blog writer. I was also really focused on building my credibility on Upwork, so I was taking low paying but quick jobs at that time so someone would pay me five dollars to write like a 350 word article or something like that something i knew wouldn't take me very long but i could nail get a five star review and start like building my credibility building my ratings and reviews on upwork so i could eventually get better paying clients and better gigs. And then I was also just working on building my portfolio with paying clients. So basically anybody who wanted to work with me at this point, I was accepting. So I wrote for a lot of different types of niches. I did travel, fashion, history, beauty. I wasn't doing full on copywriting yet. I would do editorial stuff in addition to copywriting, blog writing, content writing, whatever you want to call it. I was bad at saying no to projects that were weren't a good fit for me. Therefore, I wasn't niching down, I wasn't building expertise anywhere, and I wasn't building my portfolio like in a meaningful way that was really gonna convert clients. I was also really bad at managing my time during this period of my life. Especially like in the first month of freelancing, I spent a lot of time working on my personal blog because I thought that that would somehow like turn into freelance writing clients, but it didn't and nobody cared. Like it didn't help me. After that first month, I was like feeling so burned out. I made $800. I was like, I worked so much. I only made $800. So what's going on? I'm telling you like literally from the beginning, I was always trying to figure out how can I make more money and how can I work less? And that's what you should be trying to figure out too. But anyways, I track everything that I do time wise with an app called Toggle. I'll link it below. I just saw like, oh my God, I'm spending like 10 hours a week on Pinterest, but how much money do I get from that? Nothing. So I just stopped doing it. And after that, I was working less and putting more of my efforts towards things that were like actually gonna bring me money. I was also really bad at focusing during this time. When I started as a freelance writer, I was living in LA, I was partying a lot. The thing about that is like, if you party a lot, but you go to a nine to five, like it takes a while to get fired, right? Like you're not just gonna like drop the ball when you're hungover and then like get fired. You have to be like consistently hungover for a long time. But when you're a freelancer, there's no safety net. The whole business is relying on you and your ability to do your own work. So if you drop the ball, that's gonna hurt you. If that actually like affects your business even if it's just for one day so I had a hard time focusing on my business and making sure that I was like getting everything I needed to get done and not letting all the temptations of the party scene in LA get the best of me but then in September so halfway through this time period I moved in with my parents in Ohio which was great because I had no friends so I was really focused on just working and building my business and I was able to just like really zoom in because my parents bless their hearts and I mean that sincerely and not in like the southern passive aggressive way they took it care of everything for me I had to do my own laundry and stuff but like they would go grocery shopping make all the meals and I just like would emerge from my basement office at 7 p.m and eat dinner and then go to bed so I really thank them a lot for doing that for me. So I did eventually learn how to focus more. 2018 was my first full year of freelancing. I earned $56,342.95 in 2018, which comes out to $4,695.25 per month. That's pre-tax. Would that have worked out in Los Angeles? No, like that probably wouldn't have been enough money, but when I was living with my parents in Ohio, that was fine. And then when I moved to Europe and became a digital nomad, that was also enough money to live off of. I worked 973 hours total, which is about 19 hours per week. And that averages out to $57.10 per hour. So the numbers of 
2018 are a little bit skewed because in June I had a $20,000 project with Olay through Upwork, which obviously like really inflated my numbers for the year. I got paid out for that in July. So if we take out July from all these statistics, then I made $36,794.71 in 2018, which is more like $3,000 per month, which is nothing to sneeze at. I mean, you can certainly live off of that amount of money, especially in Portugal, which is where I moved in 2018. So what I was really focused on in 2018 was building my brand. So I narrowed down my niche to just beauty. I spent a weekend building a beautiful website. I read a book called Book Yourself Solid by Michael Port, which I highly, highly, highly recommend. And I was really just trying to level up my business, be more professional. My goal was basically to become the go-to beauty copywriter. Like if you Google beauty copywriter, I want to come up. What I was bad at in 2018 was having a work-life balance, particularly before I left for my European adventure in August. I was just living with my parents. I was working all the time, really focused on that. I didn't have any kind of like personal life really. I think the one social thing I did was I went to like a pub trivia night once a week. Um, I didn't really have like a lot of friends where I was living and dating. Forget about it. No way, Jose. So that was one thing I really struggled with in 2018, but all in all, I think it was worth it because even though my mental health wasn't super great at the time, I wouldn't be where I am today if I didn't get on the struggle bus for that year. Okay, let's talk about 2019. In 2019, I earned 51 thousand seven hundred seventy five dollars and twenty nine cents, which is about four thousand three hundred and thirteen dollars and sixty one cents per month. It's really hard to read numbers like that. I worked about seven hundred seventeen hours total, which is about fourteen hours per week, and that comes out to being paid $70.14 per hour for every hour that I worked. I charged more than that though. I think at that point I was charging $75 per hour. So I was way more focused on making more money and working less. I was on this great adventure in Europe and I was really just trying to maximize the amount of time that I was spending on working by getting as much money as I could and then just piecing out for five days at a time. Like I really only worked Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday during this time period, which was great. Lots of time for partying and getting wild. So yeah, I was asking my clients for more money. I was asking for raises with existing clients. I was dumping poor paying clients that I didn't like working with. I started outsourcing, editing my posts. I began doing that after I lost a client because I had too many grammar and spelling errors in my posts and they were pissed off about it. So just started hiring out for that. But yeah, I was bad at delivering high quality work. I was partying a lot at the time. I wasn't very like focused on my business or excited about it. It was really just like a way to make money and that's it. And it's not really what my main priority in my life was at that point. And I think it shows in my work, but at that point I had been doing it for so long that even like what was subpar to me was like better than what a lot of other writers could deliver. Not bragging, it's just true. Practice makes perfect, you get good at something when you do it consistently for two years, right? Okay, so that brings us to 2020, which is the last year that I was really focused on freelance writing and no other business ventures. 2020 is the year when I launched the Freelance Writer's Guide, but it didn't really take off until 2021, although I was still doing a lot of work for it in 2020. 2020 was also the first year that I hired help, more long-term help, not just like a proofreader for posts here and there, but like a contractor to work with me on non-writing tasks. But that was more like for the freelance writer's guide and not for my freelance writing business, which by the way is called glossy type. They're different things. In 2020, my freelance writing business earned $70,804.47 which is about $5,900.37 per month. I worked a total of 403 hours on my freelance writing business, which is eight hours per week. That boils down to about $98.78 per hour spent on my freelance writing business. So that was a really great year for me, obviously. Did all that money go into my pocket? 
No, because I was using that money to start funding my coaching business, which was not profitable at that point. But once again, in 2020, I was focused more on making more money and working less hours. I was launching my coaching business and I was starting to outsource non-writing tasks. What I was bad at in 2020 was boundaries. I didn't even know what boundaries were until I was like 30. So that was something I started to work on a lot more. I had one like nightmare client at the beginning of 2020 who just like was monopolizing all my time for no additional money and just like wanted me to work on like Sunday night and stuff. Like, <sighs> Like wanted me to work out like 11 p.m. Like no. So after that nightmare client, I got better at like setting boundaries. Like I only work these days, these hours. If something is out of scope on the project, then you're gonna get charged this amount. So I started being better about contracts and setting up the expectations with the client right from the get-go. So things get more complicated in 2021 because I started outsourcing the freelance writing a little bit more. Obviously, I have moved more into the code coaching, courses, content creation. That's become more of my business and how I make money. But I do still have the freelance writing business as a stream of income. So in 2021, my freelance writing business stream of income made $52,996.68, which comes out to about $4,416.39 per month. However, since I began to outsource a little bit more in 2021, this is now what went into my pocket. Like I said before this is revenue not income so your income is your revenue minus your expenses but i worked on that stream of income for 249.5 hours in 2021 which comes out to around five hours per week there are lots of reasons why my revenue has gone down so much between 20 20 and now one is that i'm just not focused on writing anymore like this coaching business is something that i'm way more passionate about at this point i still like writing i still like working with my writing clients but after doing it for five years i'm just kind of tired of it honestly i have a personality that seeks novelty and i need to keep doing new things and like pursuing new projects and stuff i can't just stagnate wish i could i can't but just because my personality is like that doesn't mean that your business is going to stagnate or shrink like mine in its fifth year or fourth year or whatever. You can keep growing like if you stick with it or you might realize that you want to do something else and then just do that instead. That's not a failure. That's just a redirection. Like you're just like, I'll do something else. Because I want to follow your heart, follow your dreams. But if... I were still working as much on freelance writing. I estimate that I'd be making like 9K to 12K per month as a freelance writer. Would that be accurate? Hold on. Let me figure that out. If my business had grown the same amount between 2020 and 2021 that it did between 2019 and 2020, which is thir like about 37%, then I would have made $97,047.93, which is about $8,000 per month. Great. Yeah. So, and then if I would have done it again into 2022, I'd be making about $11,000 a month, which when I look at that, I'm like, well, maybe I've made a huge mistake because I feel like I don't make that much now, but oh well, what can you do? Okay, but all of this is to prove my point, which is that you can make a lot more money than you probably think you could make as a freelance writer, as long as you, you know, are approaching this from a professional focus standpoint. So that's what I'm here for, to teach you the tricks and the trades of the business of freelancing. If you like this video, you can subscribe to my channel. I have a lot more information about this for free. If you are completely new to the world of freelance writing, you're watching this and you're like, okay, well, how do I get started? Well, guess what? I have a webinar on my website called How to Start Freelance Writing in Three Simple Steps. If you're already a freelance writer and you're like, excuse me, like how do I get to the point where I'm making what? $8,000 a month, 7,000, 6,000, 5,000, whatever, whatever you wanna make, then I have something for you for free. I have a freelance writing rate calculator on my website for free that you can download and it allows you to find like the ideal amount of money you want to make as a freelancer to give you something to work towards so you can live your best life ever. If you want to learn everything that I know about running a freelance writing business, then join the Freelance Writer's Guide to the Galaxy. It's my self-guided business course 
that literally I break down all the stuff I learned over the years, how I got to this point, how I made this much money. I don't hold back. It's all in there. I'll link it in the description box below. I also offer one-on-one -on -one coaching if you're like, I really want you to walk me through it and hold my hand. I will hold your hand, buddy. It's actually my favorite thing to do, hold hands. Okay, cool. I think that's all I have to say about this. Maybe, hopefully the IRS isn't watching, but if they are, I did my taxes right, probably, I think. Also today is the day that taxes are due, but by the time you see this, that day will be long gone and I hope you filed an extension if you didn't file your taxes. I think I'm done now. Don't forget to like and subscribe, leave a comment if you have questions, and uh, watch for deer. Okay, bye. Great. This is called The Table is a Tripod. Sorry about all this stuff back here. Oh well. What are you talking about? Where's a pen when you need it?